<laughs> so this is uh, an experiment to measure the specific latent heat of fusion of water. What we're going to be doing is using some ice, which we're going to crush in a moment, uh, and we're going to be melting that in a beaker full of water. We're going to measure the temperature of the water beforehand, the temperature of the ice beforehand we'll know is zero because an ice and water mixture is always at zero degrees. And then we'll be measuring the mass of the mixture afterwards, once we've melted the water in the ice, and then we're going to measure the temperature of the water afterwards as well. And that, therefore, is going to give us all the algebra we need to actually calculate the specific latent heat, because we'll know that the, the energy used to raise or to lower the temperature of the water mixture is the same as the energy used to melt the ice. So it's a little bit of a strange method to get your head around, but actually it makes perfect sense. It's using the idea of conservation of energy. What we're saying is that the energy used to lower the temperature of the water is going to be equal to the energy to actually melt the ice, call that EL, plus the energy to raise the temperature of the ice that uh, is now water and has become in equilibrium with the water that it was with. So if we think about all those terms algebraically, then we can figure out why we're measuring these things and what we're going to use them for. So the energy to lower the temperature of the water, because ice is melting into it, so it's lower, is going to be its mass, the mass of the water, times the specific heat capacity of water, times by the change in temperature. The specific latent heat of uh, fusion of ice is going to be the mass of the ice, times by the specific latent heat of fusion. And then the energy to raise the temperature of the ice is going to be the mass of the ice times by specific heat capacity of water times by the temperature change of the ice. I guess I should put water and ice there so we know what we're talking about. So what are we actually measuring? Well, we're measuring the mass of the water originally before we've actually um, added any ice. We're measuring the mass of the ice by just um, figuring out what the total water and ice mixture mass is at the end. And we're measuring the, um, the temperature of the water initially, let's call that I, uh, theta one, and the temperature of the water afterwards. So now we'll think about how we're going to use those measurements. So if we simplify this term here, then this becomes temperature of the water at the start, take away temperature of water at the end. That's going to be the energy in lowering the temperature of the water. That energy is transferred to the ice to melt it and then to raise its, its uh, temperature. This part doesn't change, that's the ice, times, that's our target, that's our specific latent heat we're trying to work out, plus the mass of the ice times by the specific heat capacity of water times by the temperature change for the ice, which is going to be the final temperature. And you could say it's the final temperature take away zero because we knew the ice was at zero initially because it was an ice and water mixture and that's actually probably our most accurate measurement in the whole thing. Um, lastly, just to tell you, we know the specific heat capacity of water. And throughout this, I'm going to work in grams. You should remember it as 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree C. But for this, we'll just call it 4.2 joules per gram per degree C. Or we could say per Kelvin. We want the ice to be nice and fine because that will allow it to melt quite quickly. So I think this is a bit of a confusing part of the method. We're going to actually put the ice into a funnel and that's just to make sure that any ice that's already melted, any water in other words, is not going into our experiment. There we go. So we have our beaker there with the water which is at what temperature? So about sort of above room temperature somewhere. And we're going to drop in that ice. It doesn't need to be an exact amount of ice because it's all just going to be calculated out. Okay, and we're going to stir it and measure the temperature, the lowest temperature that it gets to. 
and, and we're doing that on a data logger to give us that extra um, point decimal place of resolution. So our lowest point is 20.4 degrees. Okay. The last bit of data we need is the total mass of the beaker and the water and the melted ice because that's going to be used in our calculation as well. So this is our kind of most accurate um, go for this experiment. Uh, mass of the water initially 174 grams, mass of the ice 27 grams, uh, temperature of the water initially 33.2, temperature of the ice 20.4, and specific heat capacity of water 4.2. So I'm just going to use those to kind of simplify this term here, then that term, uh, then that term, and then rearrange, and we can um, figure out L. Two hundred sixty-one joules per gram and the stated value of the latent heat of fusion of ice is 336 joules per gram. So it's not too bad really for lab conditions, that's 22% difference. And we've been having a bit of a chat about how we could improve that and talking about actually the um, energy from the room um, going either to the water or from the water. That's why we've decided to start our experiment a little bit hotter than room temperature. <coughs> so that we're not actually leaking energy out to the room. So a bit of um, insulation might, might change that. Uh, and also, we're not really sure that we've got an entirely ice mixture at the start. There probably is some water still there at the start as well. And this probably, we're taking that value as being zero. Um, whether on our read instruments that would have been zero is another thing as well. So there could have been a zero error there. Uh, we did think about whether this should be the spirit heat capacity of ice, but clearly this is actually they've got to melt first before the temperature raises up to that final temperature there. So it should be the spirit heat capacity of water rather than ice. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.